Now, do I need another conversion ratio? No. How do I know I'm done? Because I finally got units here that match my target units. Only now should we start doing the actual calculations uh, to avoid uh, confusing ourselves. For example, I think that you did the, conver the uh, calculation here and got a six, and then I think you started thinking that this six was the number of the conversion ratio. So it's better to separate those processes out. All right, um, now what's the, something we can do to simplify this? Divide uh, by two. Yeah, divide, who do you want to divide by two? The 12. That's fine. The two. Um, although maybe it'd be, what I really want to cut down to size is this number. So let's cut this number down to size. Well, couldn't you like do, reduce the 12 and the 28 by two? Oh, well, no, you can only use this once. So I can either divide two into 12 or I can divide it into 28. It would be a mistake to divide them both by two. Yeah, you can only do one, uh, only do one cancellation. Well, we want to cut down the bigger number. So two goes into 28 how many times? 14. All right, um, now what? Now you can reduce the 12 by three. Yeah, I can't put that into here. And 12, three goes into 12 how many times? Four. So four times 14, 64. Oh. 56. <laughs> right? That's good. Okay. All right. Again, this is something that might seem trivial, but there's a deep lesson here, which is everybody thinks they're better at doing math in their head than they really are, including me. Um, I always think I'm being really clever by doing stuff in my head, but I either make a mistake or I take so long checking it, I would be better doing it on paper anyway. So this is important advice for the test. Do all your calculations on paper. Even calculations you know how to do in your head. You should do them on paper because you're less likely to make a mistake and you have to check it anyway and it's easy to check something on paper that's in your head. Um, so uh, I know I, uh, this is kind of futile advice. No one has ever taken my advice on this. Doesn't matter how many times I tell people this, they always do calculations in their head. And I can't make fun of them too much because I keep doing calculations in my head even though I make a mistake every time. But one of these days, someone is going to learn that we're all bad at doing calculations in our head, especially under time pressure. We're not saving time by trying to do mental math. It doesn't take any time at all to write a couple numbers down and do it on paper and actually carry the numbers like you would in grade school. All right, um, so that would give us 56 here. So what was the answer to the question? Yeah. 56 grams. So 56 grams. We want to make sure we know when we're done. So here we got our answer, 56 grams. Again, there's no point ever using our table in this case. We don't really ever need the table because we never actually got a number in moles, which is all the table is made for processing. So the table wasn't very important here, except for the stoichiometric coefficients in the equation. Okay, well, I think you both had some trouble when you were working through this one. And the part that was giving us trouble was uh, maybe just knowing the order to do things. So let's review that again. First, write down the target units on the far right. Then, write down the starting information on the far left. Neither of those is a fraction on this type of problem. Then you write down one conversion ratio after another. First, you write down the units in the conversion ratio, and only then do you put in the numbers for the conversion ratio, because you don't know where to put the numbers until you put the units in. I'm sorry, what was step three? I don't really have a number of steps, but they right. were um, write first, down the target, so first target unit, then write starting. down the starting information, write down the conversion ratio. Conversion. First you write down the units in the conversion ratio, then you write down the numbers for the conversion ratio. These are good approaches for any type of unit conversion, not just the types sure. you're going through here. All right, um, and then check whether you've reached your target units. If you haven't, you have to write down another conversion ratio. And again, you write down the units first, and then you write down the numbers in that conversion ratio. Don't do any calculations until you've finished writing down all the target units. I'm sorry, don't do any calculations until you've finished writing down all the conversion ratios. Because maybe some of the calculations will evaporate by using canceling and reduction as you go. And in any case, you just, it's just less confusing to do one thing at a time. So you may have to make sure that you set this up on a, on a, in your scratch paper in a place that there's enough room to set up the entire conversion in one fell swoop. So basically, I should just make more explicit, the way I've been writing this on the board is the way I actually recommend doing this on the text. It might seem like it takes a while to get through this, but it actually it takes more time to try to skip steps or do steps in your head. Um, it's actually, you should actually write exactly what I have on the board 
actually in your notes, it wouldn't actually take that long to go through these steps if you were confident about the steps. Okay, and you know you're done when you reach the target units. Uh, also, we saw a common trap. Don't put in the number one in the conversion unless you mean that there really is a number one. Don't just put it in automatically. All right, and this is a common pattern for stoichiometry, although, of course, you've got to use your judgment. This doesn't apply to every problem, but it applies to a lot of problems.